गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन हैप्पी इंटरनेशनल डे फॉर बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी सो वी वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस इंस्टा लाइव सेशन आई एम ए कंसल्टेंट प्रोजेक्ट कंसल्टेंट फॉर साहस साहस इज ए बेंगलुरु बेस्ड एन जी ओ वर्किंग एज ए पार्टनर विथ जी आई जी इंडिया इन इम्प्लीमेंटिंग नमा फेसिलिटी प्रोजेक्ट फॉर so the circular way solutions is a project which is working uh, to reduce the carbon footprint by giving awareness on source segregation uh, encouraging people to compost their waste by setting up biomass plants or the recycling plants to recover as much waste as possible and stop that going to landfill which creates the carbon footprint so today being the international day for biological diversity Uh, we have this live session uh, with vani murthy uh, this is a, a launch to inaugurate the series of face and circularity dialogue this is a series and this episode 1 is with vani murthy so uh, today's event is we are very proud to say with the with the, with the support of this uh, esteemed uh, partners the ministry of uh, the german federal ministry for the environment nature conservation nuclear safety and consumer protection the department for business energy and industrial strategy of uk the danish ministry of climate energy facilities the european commission the children's investment fund foundation so these are our esteemed uh, partners i mean donors uh, who are supporting the circular way solutions project so without these donors we cannot achieve what we would like to achieve with the carbon footprint so uh, with this i would like to uh, invite uh, vani murthy so vani murthy uh, don't need an introduction but she is called uh, a composting queen who is passionately uh, driving this uh, movement of uh, you know uh, best practices sustainable practices at house level at community level at city level she is the most uh, you know uh, 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 passionate influencer on social media who influences people make them fall in love with the process of composting seeing her uh, you know uh, videos or talks or whatever people are motivated to take up practices at their level what they can do so many people she has transformed and recently she has been chosen for uh, by national geographic channel as uh, one for change you know for her passionate uh, talk and the way she influences people uh, not only makes this place world a better place to live but also helps and guides many people to travel that path so here hi vani welcome to you hi hi shanti hi shanti yeah it's lovely to go so, live with you on such a day such a important day for us yeah yeah so vani the circular way solutions uh this project is aiming at uh, source segregation and promoting composting so first i would like to ask you uh how was your journey i mean how did you begin in 2008 vani started her journey uh, of you know understanding how why sustainably you have to live and all that so we would like to hear from you what motivated you how you got motivated to do all this right uh, thank you that's a very important question to myself too all the time Uh, because uh, uh, when i started i didn't know anything about sustainability about uh, uh, the ecosystem about biodiversity there was nothing that i knew about all i knew was i wanted to get out of the house uh, to do something different that i have done uh, in all my years you know uh, go out and explore the outside outside what my comfort zone was and dr minakshi has been uh, the single person who mentored me at such a time she was passionately involved in many projects and uh, i think uh, with her uh, uh, protection I, i was able to explore the outside world and uh, you know start understanding uh, you know how important it is for us uh, to do our bit and uh, learning it uh, slowly step by step you know and uh, uh, starting to uh, be very consistent about what we do what we put into practice and that has been the journey you know uh, even now it is that it is the consistency it is about uh, how connected we are uh, to to nature and all all that nature uh, you know wants us to be like 
you know i think that has been the best part of the journey uh, and uh, i can't i can i can say that i've never been this happy ever before uh, and uh, this satisfied and this uh, energetic uh, ever before in my life so at 60 uh, this is uh, this is the best best time of my years i must say yeah one thank you this uh, you know we all know that nature is declining at the speed that it was never before so we all you know human actions and human i you know thinking about you know the connectivity with the nature is missing and all that so at this point how do you think uh, the citizens you know the urbanites who are uh, you know in this uh, cities uh, located how can they contribute uh, to save this biodiversity at their practices by their practices? absolutely absolutely you're so so right in saying that uh, we we have uh, you know a huge problem uh, ahead of us if we don't take action if every citizen doesn't take an action because i think human beings dominate this planet and uh, we have over consumed uh, we have polluted and we have uh, made sure that we destroy uh, you know a, a thriving planet uh, and uh, it is time for action and i i'm sure that individual action uh, never ever say that uh, if i change uh, things don't uh, it, it will not be be a big difference but you will make a difference because i think even small changes make a huge uh, huge difference we have habitat loss we we do have uh, uh, you know uh, unsustainable uh, resource utilization uh, which is like depleting resources all the time uh, and of course uh, uh, pollution uh, it's it, you don't even have to specify we are polluting the planet all the time which is harming us and the life around us uh, so if it is today there is climate change there's global warming and people are asking for action uh, uh, it, it it is not too late uh, we can still turn it around if each of us have the ability to understand uh, that we need to have a consistent approach to what we can contribute positively to this planet that's the most important thing in whatever way to way small big however we are i mean uh, within our own team we can see that each of us in our own strengths we are trying to do our best you know and uh, we are trying to up our game every time uh, so i think that's what we need people to connect to connect to that this is an important issue uh, this is an issue that needs your contribution uh, you, you're not looking at a, a scale but at a personal level what is it that you can take what steps can you take to reduce this overconsumption uh, to make sure that you build good soil where life thrives and uh, you know eat make choices about the food that you eat so that you are contributing uh, to naturally grown food but not uh, the polluters like the pesticides and the fertilizers which which uh, kill uh, life in soil so all the biodiversity uh, how can i as an individual in conserve and also restore the biodiversity in in our, in this planet is something all of us have to think there is no no choice left here uh, there is only one choice that you need to contribute positively yeah so uh, as vani says yes uh, the fertilizers the chemical fertilizers are killing the earthworms and from bees to uh, earthworms to uh, animals you know every being is threatened due to human action so right. the plastic what we use the cows are eating and they dying and we we, we feel that you know like we know we know that it is happening but what is that we can do vani what are the best practices that you would suggest uh, at a house level we you yes. know your kit what you carry can you show it to your audience that they can practice they can start doing you know composting at home carry right. your own separate boxes yeah uh, i i think uh, we we have uh, uh, told time and again uh, how we can reduce the consumption of uh, single use uh, because that's another huge polluter you're using uh, it really doesn't make sense if you look at uh, a, a sensible person you should know that uh, when you use anything that is used once which has used resources to make it make the product it is made with energy and then you use it once and you discard it it doesn't make any sense that's not the way we need to live uh, we need to look at uh, a mindful uh, existence on this planet because uh, we we are not the only people who are here uh, along with us there are uh, millions and billions of other species that get trapped because of the way we live and also there are future generations that are going to be ahead of us so how mindful can i be of the resources that i use will be the first thought uh, can i reduce uh, the usage of paper cups plastic cups uh, be it uh, you know in anything that is used once including the tissues used once and discarded that should be the first 
level. Second, make choices about what kind of packaging that you want. Uh, can I reduce that amount of packaging? And the third thing is uh, do a waste audit in your homes. Find out what kind of waste that you generate and look at the categories of waste and see if these are the waste that I can reduce uh, by refusing. And these are the kind of waste that I can divert to uh, recycling. And these are the waste that is 60% from my kitchen, which I can compost. And I think compost is, composting, to, according to me, is the best and uh, the only action that you can take on a daily basis. You know, Every day you can compost, put it back to where it belongs because organic matter is so precious to soil. And if that is diverted away from uh, going into the landfills and polluting the environment, we are effectively putting it back to where it belongs. It belongs to the soil. So the soil has the nutrients that the plants can readily absorb and you get healthy and nutrient-dense plants which we need to eat. So we can complete the cycle within our homes and it is it, it has to be experiential. It has to have excitement. And uh, th that's, that's the way we need to look at the connectedness with nature. We need to be excited about wanting to be a part of this nature. And I think that can have in each of us you know we have so much the, today's life is so stressful if we could bring this excitement with our personal connect with nature i think everything changes around us i mean at least it has changed around me uh, i i feel i have evolved to be a better person better citizen of this planet i feel i'm worthy living on this planet because this planet gives me so much and i'm not showing any gratitude if i abuse her i i have to show my gratitude by saying Thank you for giving me the air, the water, and the soil to grow my food, a healthy soil to grow my food. I think this is what each of us need to think and start as practice. Yes, Swami. As you told, if only each one of us can feel the gratitude each day, you know, for the planet, for all that we are enjoying from nature and respect that, it would be great. So, uh, Save the Soil has been the movement. You know, uh, everyone talks about save the soil, save the soil. But how can, you know, an urbanite, uh, you know, be a part of saving the soil? How can he do composting at home, you know, which uh, indirectly uh, is, you know, uh, helping the billions of microorganisms thrive in the soil? How can right. he make a difference in his house level to do composting and uh, feed the soil? Can you show right. your composting process? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have much for a demo, uh, but of course, uh, the composting is, uh, like I keep saying, uh, uh, that is the, when I compost, that's the rent I paid to stay on this planet. I believe that, you know, I, 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 this is this is something that I, I need to do. Uh, there's no way that I won't compost every day because uh, the amazing resources that come from my kitchen, which is supposed to be waste, uh, is converted into something that I grow my food. We can't grow all our food. But what we can do is start looking at uh, uh, understanding what real food is. It is about uh, building soil, growing something and understanding this is the food that needs to go into this body. This is the food that needs to be grown in a living soil. And how do you get a living soil? By putting organic matter. So you just see the connectedness. It's all the connectedness. Uh, to the soil. Uh, the soil is the most important thing on this planet. Uh, we urbanites, we don't have uh, you know, soil on the ground, but we can have few pots to learn how to grow food. And then when you eat real food, you start sourcing food that is um, good quality, which is safe for us to eat, which is grown in natural soil. So that is the transition that we can make. We don't have farmlands to grow all our food, but at least we can opt and make choices about choosing the right food to put into our body. A uh, pandemic has shown extensively throughout the entire uh, you know, world that uh, we are low on immunity. Why? Because most of the food that we eat is grown unnaturally. It doesn't have a natural uh, uh, ecosystem uh, that it's growing because the nutrients are held in its 100% when it is natural. And, and when grown with pesticides and chemicals and herbicides and other toxins, uh, the soil loses its potential uh, to give that kind of uh, nutrients. And that is where our immunity has been lacking. And that is where we have got this huge pandemic on us. It's time for people to start looking at soil as the nourishment and as the medicine. You know, when soil is uh, uh, full in its biodiversity, the soil has uh, enough life, the soil has uh, the nutrients, then our plants 
bring that nutrients to us you know so we need to choose what we eat many people say organic food is very expensive i'll say why is the other food so cheap you know if you buy 1 kg i'll give you 1 kg free why is it so cheap ask that question to yourself why do you need to make choices on the food that you eat yeah wani true you are you're right saying that uh, we may not be able to grow everything what we eat uh, true that i can also not grow uh, everything what we eat but my policy is at least in a week two three days you should be able to eat what you grow exactly. i don't have a huge space but two with a small space grow some greens some small vegetable easy vegetable grow turmeric a little what we can consume can be poisonless that is my yes. concept Uh, right. So, uh, saying that uh, Vani herself on her terrace has, uh, you know, a biodiversity. I mean, they are all the life staying together. She, the post she has, like earthworms. Uh, how she makes the earthworms thrive in her, uh, you know, compost. And uh, she, you know, uh, uh, you know, butterfly. How she sees the butterflies go through the stages, different stages, and in front of her, how they fly out. All these are giving little little joys of. you know uh, experiencing in this urban life so why if you don't mind can you you know go around your terrace and show different the composters what you have and how you sure. uh, you know sure. manage them so uh, when when i when i put my food waste into my uh, worm bin uh, these worms uh, uh, they they are amazing uh, they consume uh, the food and uh, they whatever they ex- excrete uh, is is the food for my plants you know that's the food that my plants readily absorb and uh, they are nutrient dense so uh, so it's very important for us to look at uh, what we can do with with what we usually uh, look at as waste and uh, try to discard so i'll just turn my camera around uh, so i have uh, composting systems uh, all around uh, you know there are earthen pots uh, there are plastic buckets uh, there are mesh composters here uh there is the rotating drum uh, rotating drums uh you know all kinds and i i hoard leaves you know dry leaves are something that i hoard all the time uh that it's so important for me uh you can see uh, leaves uh, leaves are uh, freely available uh, the tree shed uh, shed them every season i just collect them people gift me leaves and you can actually see the biodiversity here uh, there it's full of uh, you know life you can see creepy crawlies they are all part of the ecosystem uh, they need to be uh, there uh, to to convert this food waste into into this amazing black hole uh, which we add to our plants and uh, one shouldn't be afraid of the creepy crawlies because uh, they are the most important things for the converting of it uh, and of course i i have uh, different plants there are uh, curry leaves and there of course uh, turmeric mm-hmm. and because of the rains you can you cannot believe uh with good nutrition uh, look at this this is uh, amaranth uh, this is it it's so thick the stem uh, it's it's growing so beautifully and fresh there's turmeric around so within a small uh, space you can see many plants growing uh, there are different kinds of uh, 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 you know herbs there's rosemary there and uh, of course this is uh, uh, another uh, uh, thing that we use for chutneys and uh, <laughs> so there are capsicums uh, there's this uh, lemon grass here and uh, of course uh, you know capsicums here uh, uh, there are squirrels that come in the monkeys that come in uh, lots of pudina there uh, so see this is a terrace that i'm lucky to have uh, and uh, i i try to grow as much as i can like shanti said uh, when you grow and uh, eat your own food uh, there is uh, so much of happiness uh, and uh, you can see basle growing uh, and with the rains they are, they do really well uh, there are uh, two mango mango saplings that have really shot up i need to send it to some farm uh, you know we we do avocado saplings and send it to farms so that you know they can grow there is um, uh, there is gongura here chuka soppu there is even beetle leaves you know i come to my terrace and i pluck all of them and eat them off the plants <laughs> that's one of the ways there is again oregano there and uh, so you can see uh, uh, you know there are flowering plants to attract butterflies uh, uh, so that you know they, they come for the nectar and there are uh, plants which which have so you can see this is uh, uh, the chaprada avrikai we call 
uh, and it, it is in a very small pot. It's because of the food that we give it. It's it's gone up to the top, and I get so much of them. Uh, there is this another small pot. It's less than ten inches, and it's just growing up like that. And you can see small butterflies there, uh, which is trying to take the nectar in. And uh, brinjal plants, and these are all plants that attract, you know, the uh, butterflies. Very important for the biodiversity. And of course, I have another, uh, you know, uh, artha here, which all my garden waste goes into it. So nothing is a waste as such. So you can see this is a a drum, and I have a. drumstick plant or in a drum drumstick in a drum plant and i let them uh, go for seeding so this is a thick one that goes uh, to become seeds which i use again so you get lovely flowers these little purple flowers that come uh, so yeah and then uh, ajwain leaves dot patre we call uh, medicinal plants and all kinds of stuff you can grow in your terrace the kadi patta plant is the one that is a host plant for uh, for the uh, butterfly the common momon uh, i i dedicated i don't use these plants for my cooking many people say oh these pests have come and they eat up my leaves uh, to me these are the plants that are dedicated to the uh, you know butterflies they come they lay their eggs and the entire cycle metamorphosis happens and it's so wonderful to see nature close to your own home you know that's the best part is that you get to see uh, you 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 are a part of nature you know and you bring nature into your homes and it makes a huge difference to the way you live and uh, this is like a, a a space that you know i i just thoroughly enjoy i also have a beehive uh, these are stingless bees uh, just now one came out uh, they they go and uh, take the nectar from everything and they stay here uh, i i don't take the honey uh, it's just for pollination and let them build their colony let them have all the nectar they want uh that that's how i i believe there are you know monkeys squirrels which come and eat my produce i am fine with that because uh, i am just making sure that i am a part of the nature you know this is not mine it belongs to everybody uh so we we need to be a little more uh, gracious there uh, and let life thrive uh, you know it's an urban sitting setting and how how many how many uh, they don't have enough food it's not a forest which is uh, so we are so protective about our own uh, stuff that we need to hold it for ourselves so by just letting them thrive around you i think we will make a difference to their lives and to the general uh, you know health of the planet sir mani super so uh, this very well goes with the theme whatever you have shown on your terrace it's so beautiful this year the international day for biological diversity the theme is building a shared future for all is it funny right. building a shared future for all <laughs> you know squirrel <laughs> monkey butterflies earthworms uh, bees bees so beautiful <laughs> and uh, i am sure all the audience who you know see this get tempted get motivated to start composting for all this to be on the terrace the first step is to compost your waste the waste what you consider as waste is really not waste how you can convert that into food for all these beings around So Vani is called by different names: worm Rani, butterfly mom. It's also yeah. Vani. Like you know, you are living by example. I'm sure audience are getting motivated to start composting. Uh, so for those who feel you know that uh, you know scared to start composting, uh, does composting smell, etc., etc. Can you get those fears out and you know make them feel confident to start composting? And remember. Once all you all of you start composting, don't forget to tag us at Circular Waste Solutions. We'll be very happy that you know so many people are motivated. Uh, can right. you share uh, Vani, your you know experiences of failures, but still you can you know continue composting right. without giving? Yeah. Uh, firstly, uh, one should feel that they have the power to change. Right. Uh, that's very important. And once you get that uh, power. nothing will stop you nothing will stop you uh, all the uh, composted compost related questions will just disappear because uh, when you feel empowered uh, to do something as as powerful as composting because i feel composting is a powerful action and it's a daily action till the end of my life and if we have the power to make that change to contribute to that change and uh, saying that i will not let my uh, 
kitchen waste get out of my home because when i i should know that when it goes out it pollutes my environment it ends up see that information is extremely important it ends up in the landfill it gets trapped there it becomes anaerobic digestion and then the methane gets released re- released it pollutes my air then the leachate goes down into the groundwater it pollutes my water it enters the soil around it pollutes the soil that grows my food so the three things that are so vital for us gets polluted so once you have this information then composting is just experiential you feel excited about learning this new art you know whenever you you want to go and learn something that you love you you are completely 100% or more than 100% into it because you want to learn that art you want to learn that language you want to learn uh, that uh, a particular uh, you know uh, whatever talent that you want to have same way uh, composting is something that you have to learn through experience no matter what i say shanti says it's just information Uh, unless you practically do it you're not going to understand composting so you need to experience it it's okay to fail because failure teaches you a lot of things like in life when you fail you are learning it shouldn't be an experience that you forget and push under the carpet it is an experience that gives you information on what you did not do right so next time what can i do right to get it right right so i think composting there are few few uh, you know challenges uh, that people have uh, it's more like a constraint that they have because of these challenges uh, it could smell there could be creepy crawlies uh, i don't have the space i don't have the time so these are all uh, excuses that can come around when you don't connect to it but when you have the excitement of uh, you know starting this new uh, uh, you know new i, I think uh, uh, it's just a transformation within you uh, to want to tra- compost then all these excuses just fade away so the smell comes because there is no aeration the composting means uh, it it needs oxygen it's aerobic in nature so you will learn as you do when you get a smell you will know that your 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 pile has become compacted and if if you say uh, if you just put your green waste uh, again it will start smelling because it needs enough browns to add to it to absorb the excess moisture from the greens then the creepy crawlies there are millions that you can't see Uh, and you're okay with that because you want the breakdown to happen but when when you see a bug or a maggot who you say oh this is not for me and you want to stop so don't be afraid because they are all part of the ecosystem you know when you want ecosystem to thrive you just start composting you will know that this is the ecosystem that world has and we should let it thrive we cannot say i want good food but i don't want creepy crawlies right uh, because they are the ones that convert so if there is a natural cycle in the composting that takes you from one stage to the other it is it is a process that happens naturally like in the natural world all you need to do is assist it because we are in the urban scenario you need a container you need to you know put the right amount of browns in the greens and then if you want to accelerate the process you can add some uh, you know cultures that can accelerate like cow dung like for between you and me we are big fans or we we just love cow dung right <laughs> there's no uh, there's no you know uh, second uh, opinion about that we just love cow dung from a desi cow and uh, uh, use cow dung or buttermilk to accelerate the process and the lastly uh, you know wait patience you need to wait you know composting can't happen in 24 hours you know if somebody is selling you a machine saying composting in 24 hours just don't believe it it's all a hoax it cannot happen naturally it takes time and uh, that is what gives it the quality of nutrients that the soil needs and the plants need so uh, i think just enjoy the process uh, dive into it without hesitation uh, just uh, to learn uh, what nature is uh, how we can uh, have this uh, beautiful nature within our spaces be it balcony or a terrace or a backyard or wherever it is and do your bit i, I think uh, 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 that's what we all have the excitement of composting every day we are excited it's a, a morning high for all of us you know just we don't need to abuse ourselves with any other other things except you know the morning high of the composting process itself yeah so so uh, uh, yeah as vani told failing is okay we all have you know fallen time and number of times while you know learning to cycle right it's not that at, at once we got how to ride a cycle we all fall but we never give up that's how we are today able to you know use all of them 
Now, uh, I'm very grateful this uh, GIZ India is supporting NAMA Facility Funded Circular Waste Solutions Project uh, to promote more and more people take up uh, composting. So this project, Circular Waste Solutions, is in five cities, Bangalore, Trichy, Varanasi, Delhi, and Goa. So in Bangalore and Trichy, Sahas is the NGO, uh, Bangalore-based NGO, which is an implementing partner on ground. So we request all the audience uh, uh, to do, make use of these uh, you know, sessions like this and take up composting. You get motivated today, start composting today. Start practicing sustainable practices. There are a lot of, uh, lot of us who can guide you, but the decision should be yours. So, Vani, uh, like, uh, you know, it's possible to show a, a kit that you carry. Can, can you tell what all you carry when you go out without forgetting? Uh, you know, that, that to reduce that carbon footprint again. What uh, is that to practice make zero waste travel? <laughs> I, it's inside. I didn't uh, bring it out uh, because so I didn't know that I needed. Yeah. yeah. So the, uh, if I have if I have a traveling kit, it is a ready kit that is always there. Uh, recently, I went on a three three day trip, uh, road trip, and I equipped myself. See, when you leave home, at home you have everything around, but when you leave home, you need to equip yourself uh, for the only reason that you want to stay, uh, refuse anything that is single use. So you don't know where you're going to go, where you're going to eat, what you want to drink. So when when there is, uh, you know, when, when, when you are faced with a situation where there is paper cups that is going to give you tea and chai, which you need so badly at that time, it's cold. It was cold in uh, Chikmagalur where we went. Uh, we need to drink tea or chai and they're all given paper cups. And if you prepare yourself in your backpack or in your handbag, there is a, you know, a steel tumbler. Or, or, or something that uh, can you can just sip on the way. Uh, it'll be great. Same way, put in a tissue. You know, uh, have have some a plate, a napkin, uh, so that if there is food available, but they're giving in a disposable, I wouldn't even accept a disposable that is biodegradable because it's still a single-use disposable to me. So I will use a reusable, a steel plate. You know, have a melamine plate or a steel plate in your bag. It doesn't. It, it's not much of a burden it, it, to carry these. When you leave home, whether you're going for a conference, whether you're going on a holiday, whether you're going just to meet someone in a restaurant, you never know what the restaurant. So when you order for for a, a, a juice, you when you order itself, you ask, please get me in a reusable glass. Please don't put the straw in it. You know, so that you are making sure that you are completely refusing a, a, a single use. I, I think that's very important. So your bag needs to have all the essentials that could surprise you. Because when you go out, you don't know, uh, uh, you know, what kind of surprises you will have, but you need to eat and drink. Uh, so how are you going to say no? So you carry your own bag in, in your uh, backpack so that you can, when you buy something, you, you can uh, take it in your bag and not take it in a packaging or a plastic cover. Even the other covers, which uh, bags look like a cloth is not, it is the polypropylene non-woven bags. And they are also not uh, good because they can't be recycled and they are, uh, polluting the environment. Ultimately, they'll disintegrate to become a part of the soil and it'll never ever go away. It'll enter the system somewhere and comes back to us some form or the other. So I believe in the karma where what you throw out will come back to you sometime or the other. So always believe that you throw out positive things, uh, you give positive vibes, you get back. Same way if you throw trash, it comes back in some, it may co not come back in the same original way, it'll come back in some form or the other. So uh, we, we, we need to be very mindful of that. Very true, Vani. Whatever you throw, it comes back to you. Maybe you throw garbage at villages. What comes back to you is, you know, a pollu in the form of pollution, air pollution, water food. pollution. And food pollution. also polluted. We get vegetables from there. And this is also, I mean, easy to understand, but maybe a little difficult to follow. But I think today most of you are inspired by what Vani is saying and she lives by example. She preaches only what she practices. It is not that you preach, uh, you know, hundred things and you come and no. We have uh, seen Vani uh, practicing what she preaches. Uh, so Vani, yeah, why is it important that me composting at home, me practicing sustainable practices, whatever simple things I do, should I keep quiet or should I go and talk loud out to the world? Why is it important that you become an influencer? Uh, talking, talking, every simple thing what you do. Why is it important to share? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we both have proved that we don't keep quiet at all about our practices. <laughs> Sharing is so important because uh, uh, you you are not, uh, you know, an expert. We are, we are people who have uh, 
practiced. We wear it on our sleeve very proudly, uh, the practice that we have. And uh, it is not about uh, pointing fingers at people or judging people. It is about uh, excitedly talking about the best practices that we have adopted in our lives. And if that reaches out to people and if it can just uh, sit in there, tweak into their uh, you know, thinking and uh, uh, you know, make a big, small change towards it, our lives are made because I think I live for that purpose of uh, wanting to make a difference uh, with the practices that I have by just talking about it. We have talked nonstop about composting. We have talked nonstop about things that we do and we never get tired of it. Why? Because we know we can make a difference in somebody's life and uh, uh, people who wouldn't have thought about it or people who are thinking about it, but sitting on the fence, they want to jump on the other side. So you have different kinds of people there. I, I've seen my own sisters who will feel so guilty when they look at me because they say, I want to start composting, but you know, you keep talking and it's constantly reminding me to start. And, and they all did. They all started composting. So you can see that change happening constantly. You're not telling them what to do but you're just excitedly sharing your practice. I think that is the key, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to make that, uh, you know, uh, the change happen because that's what you are, you're doing. You're changing yourself so that you can see change around you. And you will, you will somewhere or the other uh, get people to be a little more conscious if you keep talking. If I have a practice that I keep it very close to my heart and within my home, uh, it's not going to serve any purpose at all because it will just remain my own practice. But when I open up my home, I open up my terrace, I get hundreds of people visiting me to see what, what, what I have put, the systems that I have put in, like how uh, Kalika Kendra opens up people and you know, showcases everything. Uh, I think it's all a learning. You know, we are learning as we talk. Every time I talk loudly, I'm learning something more. It bounces back to me and my thinking also starts changing. Uh, I never thought I can talk to people like this you know, with so much of confidence uh, because th this is a practice. It's not something I learned in a book and I'm just repeating, telling you. It's not a lecture. It's not a, uh, it's not a you know, I'm not a professor talking uh, some concept. It is something that I practically do, how we all do uh, as a team. Yeah. Yeah, one. So uh, we do put a sort of pressure to everyone. How this, I'm sharing again and again, again and again, the positive things. We get tempted, you know, at one point or the other. Once they might ignore, twice they might. They get tempted to start these good practices and, you know, implement at their level. Uh, so, uh, uh, Vani, I mean, circular economy is so important today uh, uh, to maintain this biodiversity, which we are losing, literally losing. I mean, I, it is, you know, a big threat to the human existence itself. Now, yeah. uh, sending the way to uh, landfills, I think we both also visited landfills and that have, you know, uh, impacted us to really, really take a pledge to transform. Uh, right. So sending the garbage to landfills is a linear economy, right? right. Now segregating at four to three ways and composting and reducing the dry waste. And when it comes to the third category of waste, which is, you uh, know, uh, uh, domestic hazardous waste. Yeah. How can that waste be reduced? And, you know, how it can enter that circular economy? Yeah, it's right. Uh, so uh, it's like always it's going back to, uh, the good old days, uh, you know, grandparents' days, uh, they lived the most sustainable. They didn't know what sustainability is, but uh, the, the lifestyle, uh, the choices they made, you know, everybody was the same. It, it was the same. They were using natural products for their hair, you know, for their body, for the cleaning. Everything was natural. Nothing was man-made uh, or, uh, you know, with chemicals. Same way, uh, products for, uh, you know, uh, menstrual hygiene or take it for baby diapering, Everything was cloth. I mean, nobody ever used anything that was use and throw. So I think uh, it, it's extremely important for people to shift back to uh, days uh, or think about, because today you have a variety of things that is available for you, which is an alternative to a disposable uh, sanitary pad or a uh, baby diaper. Uh, you know, beautiful, lovely products. Uh, we were doing it ourselves. We used to stitch the cloth nappy, nappies. My, my, both my kids grew up on cloth nappies. Uh, stitched at home, uh, they were clean and white and sun dried and uh, hygienic. Uh, children didn't have any rash problem. We never applied any creams, you know, uh, uh, which creams are again absorbed by the body. Baby skin absorbs these, uh, you know, harmful uh, chemical creams. Uh, so uh, I think that that's important shift that you don't generate a waste uh, that is uh, hazardous and uh, which, which there is no uh, kind of, uh, it just ends up in a landfill. 
uh, and it is contaminated waste and we are responsible anything that we generate and it harms the uh, waste pickers it harms the environment it harms our ecosystem we are responsible so when are we going to take responsibility of uh, uh, how we live what we generate and what we discharge from our homes be it chemical cleaners be it uh, you know menstrual products which are disposable so all these are some things that we can shift there is a huge movement around green the red you know getting more and more people shanti and dr meenakshi and malini and uh, smita all of them are leaders in in this movement and uh, just by looking at them you can learn so much uh, how how we can do these shifts uh, without a problem you know it shouldn't be a constraint to use a good cloth pad because the benefits are to you and to the environment it's a double double whammy or double benefit that we get uh, that we are we are being responsible so we need to live as responsible consumers uh, we have to have lifestyle changes because consumerism has led to uh, you know mindless spending mindless consumption uh, we have to realize resources are limited and you cannot keep producing things that you use and throw every day uh, that and 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 that throwing pollutes the environment so it's a, it's a very wrong flawed system we need to turn that around and get into a circular system which is uh, restoring uh, which is uh, you know more natural and of course uh, uh, you know we we don't have loss of uh, biodiversity because of a mindless waste uh so yes vani thank you so much so uh, this uh, circular waste solutions uh, you can subscribe the you know youtube videos and we are live on instagram and this is just a launch inaugural event uh, of this waste and uh, circularity dialogue series so this is episode 1 keep watching us uh, you know sharing this episode uh, hearing be hearing more about it and uh, vani coming back to composting again i love composting totally <laughs> so the the most frequently asked question to start composting is will it smell the final words from you about what are the two three uh, you know tips that you give to avoid that smell people fear right. the freak out the smell yeah so if, if people okay. have found uh, smell being one of the biggest then uh, biggest problems that they are facing uh, or they imagine that they it will be very smelly uh, or some experience of somebody would have told them that it's smelly that means the process has not been in the right way uh, there there is something that has uh, put the process out of its uh, natural way uh, so uh, if you don't want smell in your compost and your compost always smells great uh, the only thing is watch the balance between the browns and the greens have enough oxygen aeration that's it these are the only two things so when you have enough browns for the greens that which is high in moisture uh, which will balance it uh, there is a like no formula here uh, you have to experience if it gets too wet you know you have put less of browns so make sure that you bring the balance in in place of the greens and the browns greens are your fresh waste browns are uh, carbon stuff which is dry leaves which coco peat it could be uh, anything that is uh, you know uh, brown in nature in nature and uh, the balance between them and make sure your container has enough aeration oxygen is extremely important because when there is lack of oxygen uh, the microbes uh, become anaerobic you know that's where the smell comes so these are only two things that you need to be to mindful of once you get this right with a couple of uh, trials uh, it composes the sweet smelling uh, amazing uh, you know product so uh, as a part of the circular waste solutions uh, people in bangalore or trichy can approach us i mean write to us at sahas ngo if you want to if you want us to conduct sessions in your community in your apartment you know if you want us to help you uh, achieve this composting not only as an individual on your terrace or balcony it also at the community level if you want to uh, you know a session to be conducted an awareness session or online offline whatever you can write to us at for saha sanju or circular waste solutions keep following us we are here to promote more and more people encourage more and more people uh, make people confident about composting it is not a rocket science it's all that our ancestors have done and uh, you know it's, it's a very simple process like so people are already following it. so if you are not already composting we request you all to sign up today and start composting so for any doubts we are here to clear uh, you know make you uh, more uh, you know uh, 
Circular Waste Solutions uh, for having me. It's an honor, uh, uh, Shanti, to talk to you, uh, to be a part of your team, uh, uh, the team that we are a part of, and to be the waste, uh, you know, uh, gang, uh, you know, the amazing waste gang that we are, uh, and more power to us. And thank you so much. 